Frank Mottarelli was born in 1916. He was an avid fly fisherman and an accomplished machinist. On December 2nd of 1957, he joined the Golden Gate Angling and Casting Club, where he was a member for more than 60 years. 60 years! And he passed away on August 17th of 2018 at the age of 102, proving that fly fishing and fly tying are good for your health and longevity. Frank invented several popular fly tying tools that have since been imitated by manufacturers all over the world, including the Motorelli Thread Bobbin Holder and the Motorelli Whip Finisher. And today, an overweight 32-year-old fishing nerd from Michigan is going to demonstrate how to use one of these amazing tools. The Motorelli Whip Finisher has a shaft encapsulated by two bearings and a sleeve which allows the tool to rotate freely. And above the shaft is an oddly shaped metal wire with a tapered hook at the top and a lower bend, both of which serve as anchor points for the thread while performing the whip finish technique. And the whip finish is the best and most commonly used technique for finishing your fly. So before you even start tying, I think it's pretty important that you learn the whip finish. So to get started, you first want to let out about three to four inches of thread. Next, we want to grip our tool by the steel wire. That will prevent it from rotating, which is very important. And when we form our grip, we also want to make sure that that lower bend is exposed. So you want to grip it just like this with the hook pointing away from you. And then we just want to hook the thread. At this stage, we are applying attention to the thread away from us using the topmost hook of our tool. And the thread where it passes through that hook is now actually behind our fly. And now while continuing to apply this tension here, we can take our bobbin and move our thread over to just catch that lower bend, just like that. So again, we hook our thread and move our bobbin over to catch that lower bend. Once you've reached this stage, you can now slide your fingers down to the shaft, which will allow that tool to rotate into place. And we're gonna let out some thread here, forming an upside down figure four. Once again, we slide our fingers down to the shaft allowing that thread to form that upside down figure four, just like that. At this stage, we can now rotate our tool above the hook, maintaining that same figure four with our bottommost thread parallel to that hook. At this stage, we wanna make sure we have about three to four inches of thread between our bobbin and the lower bend of our whip finisher. And now we're gonna drop our lowermost thread down until it meets that hook. So again, we have our reverse figure four here, and we just wanna slide that thread down to the hook. And now we're ready to go ahead and perform our wraps. And I'd say four wraps is a good standard minimum, but you may do more or slightly less depending on the situation and the materials that you're tying in. For the purposes of the demonstration, I'm gonna do four wraps. So now I'm holding the shaft of my whip finisher, which will allow it to rotate freely. So I'm just going to rotate the tool around the shaft of the hook four times. Once you've reached this stage, we wanna move the lower bend of our whip finisher tool inward toward the hook, and that will release the thread. And now the thread only remains on one anchor point of our whip finisher tool, and that is that tapered hook at the end. And now while continuing to apply tension, we wanna pull on our bobbin to close that loop all the way up to the top. And once the tapered hook of our whip finisher reaches the shaft of that hook, we can now slide it out. Now we'll just give a quick tug with our bobbin to tighten that knot down. And now to finish, we'll just snip our thread close to the shaft of that hook. So to recap, hook the thread, catch the lower bend, upside down figure four, flip it, lower the thread, perform your wraps, release from the bend, close the loop, remove the hook. And now just to make it even easier to follow, let's go ahead and watch that again in slow motion.
All right, that's gonna do it for today's video and I hope you found it helpful. And I apologize if I bored you a little bit at the beginning with that brief history lesson. But as I've been going down the fly tying rabbit hole, I've been really fascinated by the history of it. And in all of the tutorials that I watched for the Monterelli whip finisher, there wasn't a single mention of the man himself. And he was very influential in the world of fly tying, so I just wanted to make mention of him in the video. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Please consider subscribing if you did find this helpful. I got all kinds of fishing content coming your way. And I'll see you in the next video.